Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Friday evening here in Australia. Good Lord. <laughs> Bitcoin down to 46%. How, excuse me, low can this go? Wow. I mean, altcoins are still kind of running. But look, I am worried. If Bitcoin Bitcoin's rejected from the 50-day moving average, if it just travels sideways between the 50 and 100-day moving average, you know, altcoins will still do extremely well. But if Bitcoin dips below that 100-day moving average, you're going to see people get real spooked and real scared and money is going to dump out of everything. That, again, I can't offer you financial advice, but I've been in this space for a little while and I'm telling you that's what's going to happen. People are going to get real panicky if it breaks under the 100-day moving average, particularly if it goes down a little bit lower, lower. And we'll get to the charts and have a look at that. But that's what's going through my head at the moment. I'm keeping a very close eye on things. I'm not saying it can't go up and maybe the bottom's been found and all the rest of it. But again, I'm very nervous at the moment. But let's move on. All right, we're still above 2 trillion. So that's really good. Not too far off 2, point, uh, uh, 2 trillion. So hey, you know, things are still pretty good. BTC, BTC dominance down. ETH dominance up. ETH, you know, 2800. It was there. And it's kind of pulled back a little bit and gas prices you know again we haven't seen these prices too often for quite some time so they're low and again hopefully we need to get them down into the single digit stuff you know nine gray eight gray seven gray that kind of stuff you know it's still too high well it's still high but yeah it's not crazy high anyway we can see look it's just a sea of green here basically there's hardly any red at all so what's done really well in the last 24 hours what's pumped Right, Venus, never heard of it. It's a token from outside the 100, I would say. Huobi, OKB, Waves, Polygon. I mean, they just continue to go up. Yeah, I think they crack a dollar. And like I said, I think they crack probably a couple of dollars before the end of this uh, cycle, whenever that may be. Uh, and again, you know, like I got Polygon at about two cents. So I'm nearly sort of 50x up from when I bought some. I've bought some later, but I bought a majority of my Polygon at around about two cents. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not complaining at all. And again, I mean, if it goes to two, three, four dollars, wow, that'll be absolutely unbelievable. No guarantees in life though. XRP making a bit of a comeback. KuCoin, near. I mean, we got some really good gains there. And look, four of them, you know, that are above that, you know, 15% in the 24 hours, which is kind of, you know, my ratio. Anything more than 15% in a loss is a, you know, a loss that's starting to hurt. And anything more than 15% gain, and this, we're talking 24 hours, is a pretty good gain. So the gains are looking good. What about losses? Have we lost much? The market has gone up by 1.4%. So maybe there weren't too many bad losses, but maybe there still were a couple that really got hammered. Let's find out. No, hardly any losses. Uniswap down 2%, still up nearly 20% for the week. Almost no losses whatsoever. You know, single digits with the highest being 3.4%. Now, again, this is just in the top 100. So, again, that basically means hardly any losses whatsoever. So, if you're invested in the top 100 at the moment, you're probably feeling pretty good. But if you're Bitcoin heavy, then it's kind of counteracting those uh, gains and things like that. It's not like Bitcoin's just dumped, but it's definitely pulled back. And that's uh, what my portfolio is a little bit like. Bitcoin takes up around about sort of 30 something percent of my uh, total portfolio. So it does bring it down. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the charts and see what I mean and what I was talking about. So 50 day moving average clearly got rejected from it there. And now we're just traveling sideways. Now, what I hope is that we just keep traveling sideways for a while and the 100 and the 50 day moving average, they will just start to get closer and closer and closer together. And I think that's what might happen that we just, you know, kind of, you know, just keep up and down, up and down, fluctuating. We might have breakouts and fake outs both sides, but we go sideways for a while before these two get pretty close and then we start to push to the upside again. But if that doesn't happen, if we break below the 100, you know, if we really, you know, I'm thinking that if we do, we should find some support in and around here, around the kind of, you know, 46 to $41,000 range. But look, I'm, I'd already start to be very nervous 
And if that happens, the altcoins are going to bleed hard. And, you know, once the altcoins bleed hard, people will panic in Bitcoin as well. And it would not surprise me to see, you know, us come down here and correct off the, and it's good, look, <laughs> the 200-day moving average was around about 28,000 not too long ago. Now it's already up around 36,000. So for us to lose kind of about 20,000 from here is still not too bad. Yeah, it hurt for anyone who bought, you know, over 36,000 sort of. But look, anyone who bought, you know, well under, like in the $10,000 mark, Bitcoin being at 54000 or $36,000 doesn't make much difference. But again, I'm going to start to buy hard if Bitcoin comes down to this box, forty-six dollars to $41,000 range. And if it gets even remotely close to the 200-day moving average, I will sell everything that I have to buy more Bitcoin. That's that's me. Again, I can't offer you financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor and please don't take anything I say as financial advice, but that's what I'm doing. You make your own decisions about what you want to do, but we can see this 100 and the 50-day moving average, they're getting closer and closer. So it'll be interesting to see what this price does. All right, moving on, a couple of really big stories. Tom Brady gets into the uh, NFTs and someone paid $1.68 million for a Tom Brady NFT. And they used Litecoin to do it. So, $1.86 million. I mean, you know, it's like buying a mint rookie card or something like that. You know, I just, I hope it's going to, you know, maintain that kind of value. But look, again, in all fairness, this person's got a bit of money, not... You know, someone's not going to put their life savings, well, at least I hope they wouldn't, into a Tom Brady, you know, NFT. So I'm guessing 1.6 million is probably not that much to them. And it's more for sentimental value than anything. And if you've got 1.68 million dollars that you can spend sentimentally, cool, go for gold. I've got no issues with it. But just be wary that it might not hold that value. We don't know how this whole NFT space is going to play out, you know, how the value holds and all the rest of it. But again, look, if I was, a, I don't mind Tom Brady, but I'm not a huge uh, fan of his. It's, you know, I like NFL, but I'm, you know, more a, a rugby league uh, fan being from Australia. But look, if I had a spare $1.68 million, I probably would have bought it too. If it was just, you know, like sort of chump change to me, I'd be like, yeah, why not? This could be cool. And a lot of Litecoin. God, I don't even know how much Litecoin that is, but that's a lot. So yeah, look. There we go, NFT space. I don't think it's going to, you know, it, it won't die. It's only going to get bigger and bigger from here. It's just about whether the NFTs themselves hold their value. That's what we're waiting to see. All right, the House of Representatives, House of Representatives passed the Eliminate Barriers to Innovation Act of 2021. So they're seeking to order the regulatory framework around cryptocurrencies. So it's kind of merging uh, the SEC and the CFTC. So a bill to create a joint force between the SEC and CFTC to better understand and regulate cryptocurrencies has already been passed in the House and is ready to be introduced in the Senate. So look, this again, it's just leading towards that cryptocurrency is not going anywhere. People who say that, you know, it could get banned and all the rest of it, it's not going to get banned. It is 100% not going to get banned. It is going to get regulated. And once it's properly regulated, there's nothing holding it back after, after that unless it gets over-regulated. That is really going to hurt the space. Over-regulation is going to kill things, but simple regulation, KYC and stuff like that, hey, all good, I'm all for it. That's how we build this space. And that's what I see coming. So very, very interesting. All right, digital asset man, uh, marketplace, app. Appi, I don't know how to say that, Appy Finney uh, Prime has granted uh, a FINRA broker dealer's license approval. So on Thursday, again, I don't even know how to say that name, Appi Finney, a global digital asset trading and mining network, announced the company's subsidiary, Appy Finney Prime, has been granted a broker dealer license from the Financial Industry Regulator Authorities, or FINRA. The firm now joins the ranks of brokerage and uh, exchange businesses like Coinbase, eToro, and Circle. So we got another player in the space, and I don't think this will be the last. I think you'll see a number of more places come out and try and do exactly the same. Again, 
this is why I don't fall for that crap where people saying it's going to be banned and this and that. It's not going to be banned. They're regulating it. They're opening more businesses for it. This is only going to get bigger. This is literally the start of it finally going to the rest of the world. You know, it was this tiny little, th it still is a tiny little thing. Don't get me wrong, worldwide it is. But at first it was just this tiny little thing that just a few, you know, kind of what they would have called computer geeks and nerds, you know, would have played with. And now it is slowly but surely grown to the point where it's getting ready. It is now gearing up for that next step where it goes worldwide. That's what this space is on the brink of. I think, again, if you're in good projects, yes, there's going to be fluctuations up and down, you know, bear markets, uh, bull markets and all the rest of it. You're going to have that, but it, the now, th this is the unfortunate part. The bull markets are going to start to get less. They're not going to be the same in the future. Don't get me wrong. I, th I still think there's some, you know, at least probably maybe a decade of really good upside. So if you're in now, you're going to do well. But the bear markets are going to get less and less. And if you're in now, again, like I said, in good projects, I shudder to think the kind of wealth you might have in the future. And look, I'm hoping I'm in the good projects. You know, I'm sure I'm going to be wrong about a couple of them at least, maybe a whole stack of them. But I really only need one to do really, really well. And Bitcoin might be it and it's doing pretty well. Or maybe I get two and it's Ethereum, whatever it may be. Look, fingers crossed it's every single thing I put my money into. That'd be great. But I only need a couple to do really, really well. And hopefully I can, you know, change, you know, my financial future for the rest of my life. I mean, I'm doing pretty good so far. As I've said, unfortunately, not anywhere near enough to, you know, simply retire. Uh, I would love to be able to do that. But, you know, that really is millions and millions of dollars to try and retire. You know, here in Australia anyway, taxes and prices of houses and all the rest of it. Yeah, and, and I'm nowhere near that, unfortunately. But, you know, maybe, again, I've put my money in the right places, hopefully. And five, ten years time, maybe then we're talking, you know, a completely different story. Fingers crossed, and I hope that's the same for you. I'm not just hoping it for me. I'm hoping it for everybody. And, you know, let me know down below what you think the good projects are. I've already spoke about the ones that I really like. All right. Bitcoin and Ethereum. Who's backing what side, hey? Because, you know, again, we, we had, oh, I can't even remember now. It's completely lost more. Goldman Sachs. They were fudding Bitcoin and pumping Ethereum. And it looks like JP Morgan is now kind of getting on the same. So investment bank JP Morgan has published a report, a report explaining why Ether is outperforming Bitcoin. And it has been uh, ever since, you know, at least since March, you know, the pandemic last year has been outperforming it. Now, not massively, and there's times where Bitcoin's outperformed it, but overall for, you know, that amount of time, yeah, my Ethereum's doing better. So citing several key reasons, the firm concludes that there is evidence of more resilient liquidity, less reliance on derivative markets to transfer and warehouse risk, and more durable underlying demand base uh, for now at least. So that's what they're saying. Look, I think Ethereum, again, it's all about ETH 2.0 and getting that sorted. If it plays out like they're thinking it should and would, and again, you know, low fees and security and all the rest of it, I think it's going to be huge. I think it's going to be absolutely a behemoth, unbelievably big. That's my personal opinion, not financial advice. You know, Bitcoin is at, you know, it's basically 54,000 now. I think Ethereum gets there easily if ETH 2.0 rolls out and there's, you know, no major issues. But that's the thing at the moment. We don't know if there's going to be major issues. It's still got quite a ways to go. But I think if it can do it, Bitcoin is in real trouble of being dethroned. That's just my personal opinion. I think there's a lot more use cases for Ethereum. But I know there are people building on Bitcoin, trying to do similar stuff, smart contracts and all the rest of it on Bitcoin. And if they manage to make that happen, then they've still got the same scaling issues, you know, Lightning Network and all the rest of it. But if Bitcoin can do that, then I think Bitcoin stays the dominant. I still think, you know, there's, you know, all the people using Ethereum, Bitcoin won't be able to take that away from them, but they will be able to stay ahead of the game if they can do that. But you know, Bitcoin hasn't had too much innovation in that sense for quite some time. They've stayed fairly the same. 
whereas Ethereum is just a real innovator and keeps going. So for me, I'm you know I'm more heavy. I've got a bigger bag of Ethereum uh, than I do Bitcoin, and I think I'll leave it that way as well. All right, last but not least, Coinbase debuts with PayPal feature, so you can now buy crypto on Coinbase using uh, PayPal. Now, there is a catch to it though, so be careful. So Coinbase is allowing its US users to buy cryptocurrencies using their PayPal accounts in a major expansion to the exchange's uh, funding rails. And again, this is just another onboard for them. So then they don't really care about, you know, the cost that we're about to get into because this is just Coinbase, you know, finding another way to get people to buy crypto. But if you're a PayPal user, this is what you need to know. Coinbase users can now buy up to $25,000 in crypto daily using PayPal, according to the exchange settings page. But here's the kicker, they'll lose nearly 4% of such purchases uh, in PayPal specific fees. So that's the kicker right there. That's that you gotta be careful of. And that really makes a difference. You know, like you start to buy millions and millions, you know, trillions, billions of dollars, whatever it is, worth of cryptocurrencies. And, you know, the big companies that do it, they're not using PayPal. But the average person, you've lost 4% straight away. So there are definitely cheaper ways. It's still great news for Coinbase. They find another way to get people to come in and buy crypto, which is great. But, you know, using PayPal, you're going to get slugged a 4% uh, fee. And that's, you know, worse than a lot of credit cards and things out there. So, you know, buyer beware is what I'm saying. Still like that, you know, PayPal's putting crypto out there to everybody. And I like that Coinbase have found another way to get people to buy crypto. But you just need to read between the lines sometimes. And particularly check out what the fees are going to cost you and things like that. All right, well, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train at the moment, and I'll see you next time.